Because I'll tell you one thing, Misha, one thing that I always do is that I work very hard to achieve a milestone. Mm. But believe me, the moment I grab that milestone, I forget it in the same time. Okay. And you know, many of the great things start by being great. Okay. <laughs> One thing that I want to make note is I'm not a computer boss. Okay. <laughs> believe me, everybody can do it. And in fact, today, with whatever is available with, 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 with assistive technologies, now you're also launching this uh, amazing site, The Arabian Story. Welcome to the first episode of Spotlight. Spotlight is a journey, a journey not just with celebrities but with people who have made a mark in the society. Spotlight is a show that brings inspiring stories in front of you. Our first guest for today is such an inspiring personality. He created computer programs that impacted thousands of users in Oman. He is an innovator and a technologist. He is a brilliant motivational speaker and a wonderful human being. He has won several awards in the field of technology locally and internationally. Tariq Al Barwani, best known in Omar as IT expert, is our first guest today. Hi Tariq, welcome to Spotlight. Hi Richard, thank you very much. And it's an honor to have you uh, with us for the first episode of Spotlight and thank you for accepting our request. The pleasure is mine Richard, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, when we talk about technology in Omar, the first thing that comes to my mind is Tariq Al Barwani. So where did it all started? One thing that I want to make note is I'm not a computer boss. Okay. <laughs> I'm more of a, 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 a someone who fell in love with the computers uh, and, and think of how to utilize these computers to make a difference to people. Okay. Where did it start? 1984. Yes, 1984 when I was about five years old. Okay. That's when I started. You know when many people start playing games using console known as Atari okay. uh, uh, and these consoles allow you to move when you play the game to move okay. from one level to another. Okay. Uh, uh, my father got this a computer at home which was known as ZX Spectrum mm -hmm. and what he said was I'm getting you this device which would allow you not only to play games but to also do useful stuff like creating programs. Okay. So for me it was more about not only playing games as in moving from one level to another, okay. no it was more about how can I be inside that game and move from one place to another? That's crazy. That's <laughs> and that's how it started. And you know, many of the great things start by being crazy. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so that's how it really, really started back in 1984. And then, and then I started uh, all throughout my life until today, thinking of how can I use computers to create things that can benefit people, society, uh, and organizations uh, as a whole. Again, when we talk about technology, it keeps changing every day. True. So how do you actually keep uh, you know updated about it? Nothing beats reading. Okay. In fact, the first thing that uh, the first message is uh, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala shared to our Prophet Rasulullah was Iqra. And what does Iqra mean? It means read. Okay. And that was emphasized three times: read, read, read. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that I do? To okay. be honest, is I read every day about the latest trends of technology. Okay. And Believe me, everybody can do it. And in fact, today, with whatever is available with with with, with assistive technologies, now you're also launching this uh, amazing site, The Arabian Stories. People get an opportunity to read and get latest information through various means, not only through the television, not only through the newspapers, even online. So, uh, uh, reading is a method, a way to ensure that you stay updated. And believe me, everybody can do it today with the things that is available. So when we talk about uh, staying connected and staying online, uh, I was going through your Facebook page uh, this morning, uh, and I came across a very interesting, uh, you know, quote that you've mentioned in November. It says, "I seriously believe that if people can talk to each other openly and honestly about anything and everything, then they can get over and through anything and everything." And this is very relevant during today's times, you know, especially when all of us are glued on mobile. You know, there's no open conversation happening between us, uh, between families. So, how relevant is this statement? Very, very le relevant. The only uh, uh, challenge would be using technology to communicate with one another. How do you do that? Uh, the best thing is to meet up with a person and okay. speak to them face to face because there is a lot of things that you could see. Okay. The facial expression, okay. the voice, the sound and, and believe me, nothing beats face to face uh, communication. I'm technology, I love technology, it's very much an enabler. But then what you are missing if you do not have the face to face communication is the personal touch okay. and that only happens with humans is when you meet people face to face and communicate to them. And again, I use the keyword openly. 
keep work openly and that resolves many many of issues and many of the misunderstandings as well. and we have to take the initiative to do that right I mean, oh definitely does, right? if the relationship is very important then taking that step is very very important uh, we hear a lot about cyber security you know but not many know about what exactly cyber security means now being IT expert how do you define uh, cyber security in very simple or very few words it means a method a practice of protecting your systems your system can be your computers application the networks and the programs that you're really really using is protecting them from digital attacks now digital attacks could be anything people accessing onto your system the networks or application uh, uh, via the net and digitally to access change uh, 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 take information damage it and so on so cyber security in few words is protecting these assets from digital attacks how uh, strong are we especially when we talk about oman in defending these attacks we're okay uh, we're, we're good but it really comes back to the person using uh, 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 the system you need to be wary you need to be aware okay. on what is available what is happening and also installing uh, uh, certain application to protect you from these digital attacks and also ensuring that you do for instance do not go for the many free things that you get I don't believe there's no such thing as really free lunch uh, to be frank with <laughs> so avoid those free applications because these free applications what they do is they install or they put things into your uh, system in order to track you in order to monitor what you're doing and that's how you pay them in fact and that's why they give it for you for free so avoiding using this free application or even if you do download most of the free application then you really should know what are you allowing them in fact Nishat there is no such thing uh, as privacy today, unfortunately, and I think Oxford and many of the dictionaries are going to remove and omit <laughs> the word privacy because once you're connected, it's very open. It's open. Yes. Everything is open, and most of these uh, solutions providers, the people who are providing you uh, these services, good services, mm -hmm. what they get in return is your information, okay. your life. So privacy is not there. So I would really recommend people to really be wary mm -hmm. on what they use and what kind of information they put, what they share, and they should avoid that. How do we, you know, uh, basically inform them about it? Because not many know, like especially the commoners, they get to, like you just said, they would like to share the information to the open world. But how do they, you know, uh, how can they know, you know, to that there is people watching them, you know, they, their information can be stolen. So how can we safeguard them? There's many ways. Uh, one, one of the ways is having information se uh, information learning sessions. Yeah. They should also have uh, uh, seminars that are conducted. Uh, the medias need to utilize the newspapers, the radio, the TV and so on to be uh, speaking about the threats, about what is it that it's a stake of using these services or not using them in the right way and sharing yeah. information. I think nothing beats uh, the, the information uh, sharing. And there's many ways of doing it. And of course people should be reading and you know uh, uh, that, that's one of the best things yes, we've just uh, talked about reading is very important we are living with this reality of virtual threats you know uh, i get to hear a lot of stories on a daily basis people uh, you know they get calls from unknown destinations uh, asking for their personal information such as bank details and you know the next day we get to hear another story say you know about them about their uh, money being stolen from the bank all these, ha all these are happening on a daily basis and we get to hear banks sending information to customers saying don't leak your personal information to a third party. How can we safeguard such things? By knowing again, we're going back to by knowing what are the threats that are available there. But let me tell you one thing, Nishat, there's too many people are being attacked. You exactly. and I were just speaking right now that people outside exactly. there are being, being uh, attacked. The thing that one needs to know is they must not share their details over the phone. They, are, they should avoid sharing their details digitally as well. And if they need to do that, they just pick up the phone and call the bank or call the telecommunication provider and say, have you called me? Have you sent information? Or are you looking for XYZ from me? Because let me tell you one thing, most of these banks or the telecommunication providers, so on, if they want to uh, 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 see your information, they can see it because the information is already available with them. So the people who call you uh, uh, are normally people who would like to steal this information from you, but they don't have it. And they have a purpose for it. 
yet they have a purpose for it. And, and, and unfortunately, you are, we end up being the people who provide this information to them, make life easy for them. There's something known as social engineering. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the form of, uh, of hacking in which people just call you and through talking to you, they hack you. And that is by allowing you or tricking you to send them information uh, that would allow them to hack into you, get your information and so on. Uh, you are a motivator yourself. Uh, what is your idea of uh, happiness? Happiness is gratitude. I believe if you are uh, having a, se a sense of gratitude and appreciation, then you'll always be happy. And what am I saying that? Is always whatever happens. If I can be to, I'm happy and grateful. Uh, but if I start, you know, all the time wanting more, uh, uh, then, 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 then that's, that is where the issue. And always thinking about uh, the best of everyone else, then you will feel very good. And living in a positive uh, 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 mindset is a very, very important thing because if you try to be in a positive environment and if you always look into the positive of everything and the people that you work with, any person, even if you get someone who comes in and is not very happy, but you look at the positives of this person, believe me, you'll be happy. And that is uh, my definition of happiness. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, trust me, Julie. I like it when you say stuff, but it's more of our practice. Okay. Because practice, practice, practice comes to perfection. That's true. Yeah. Uh, how do you manage time? You know, because I get to see you everywhere on a daily basis. So how do you manage your time? That's the one million real question I can tell you. I am very busy. I'll be very honest with you. I am extremely busy, but I pick on the thing that I should be involved in. Okay. Uh, that's the thing that I do. Uh, um, I sleep very well. I used to not really sleep. I used to sleep only four hours uh, many years ago. But alhamdulillah now I sleep very, very well. I, I make sure that I, I, have a, I put a good time uh, to sleep, but then I pick the kind of things, the kind of project that I should get involved in, and then I, I, I work with the right people who enjoy working on the thing that they, 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 they do, and so that's what I do. I, I really pick, I prioritize my time. And How do you keep this energy? You know, you're very energetic, the way you talk, you know, and it inspires people. How do you, you know, keep that energy? What's the secret? Work out, man. <laughs> well, well I, I, I try to keep myself positive okay. and, and always uh, try to uh, motivate myself by seeing what else can be done, what could add the happiness to people, what could add happiness to myself, to the family, and to the country. So those things really give me the energy to keep on doing great, keep on doing good things. Okay. So we get to the last stage of our interview. You know, it's very interesting. It's a rapid fire round kind of a thing. So, you know, uh, basically I'll ask you a set of five questions okay. and uh, you have to answer me in one word. I'll try my best. You have to try your best. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what is the one thing that is essential to living a balanced life? What is the one thing that is essential to living a balanced life? Time management. Okay. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say the following? Okay. The first thing that comes to your mind when I say the following. Marriage. Partnership. Okay. Family. Blessing. Okay. Interesting. Money. Responsibility. Wow. Okay. Competition. Opportunity. Okay. And love. Respect. Great. Uh, the best advice you can, I mean, the best advice you have ever received. Read. Wow. Okay. <laughs> What is the one thing that you would like people to remember about you? Technologist. Okay. With due respect, what's your biggest weakness? Ah, uh, my biggest weakness. I can't say no. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> it's very difficult. I've got, I've got a very, very difficult way of saying no to people. Okay. Uh, um, when you started this program, exactly. you said when that. I you, when I called you first and you said, no, I mean, you said, yes, I'm coming there. Yes. That's one, one of the, the one <laughs> of the you examples. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you so much, Tariq, for coming to the show and thank you for being part of Arabian Stories. Thank you. The pleasure is mine. Thank you very much and I wish you all the very, very best. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tariq.